I was born and raised in a Christian home. Every time the church doors were open, uh, I was there. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday evening, and, you know, whatever special events, whatever they had, whenever the church doors were open, I was there. Um, I accepted Christ at an early age when I was six, rededicated my life at 13, uh, went into ministry around that age um, with my peers, reaching out to our um, peers in school. Once I got to high school, it was when heavy metal music was very popular, and that was the people that my friends and I targeted, uh, those into the uh, heavy metal alternative rock subculture. Our focus was always outreach. Our focus was always evangelism. And within that, we were discipling and teaching the Word of God and, and things like this. And I always knew that there was more to the Christian life. I always knew that uh, I was missing something, that there was something that was kind of missing. Uh, I kept hearing things like, we need to get back to the first century church, and people really not knowing and not fully understanding what the first, first century church was all about. Uh, their sentiment was good and well-meaning, and they were wanting to see miracles and revival and you know, just an evangelism explosion uh, like what happened in Acts chapter 2 and pretty much all the book of Acts. But again, there was something askew. There was something missing. There was something off. There was something, you know, we, we, we were getting close to the target, but we weren't hitting the bullseye. And um, I went on a personal search uh, of what the first century church was. And I discovered it was a Jewish movement. The Gentiles didn't come in till way later in the book of Acts, like I think Acts chapter 15 or something of that nature. Uh, up to that point, it was a Jewish sect, the sect that was called the Way, that the sect that was eventually called the Nazarenes because Yeshua, uh, Jesus Christ, was the head rebbe, the head rabbi. He was the one who started the movement. He was not only from Nazareth, but uh, he was also uh, the prophesied branch, and that word branch is Netzar, or Natsar, and uh, that's where you get the word Nazarene from. So basically it was a Jewish movement, and what is the core hub of the Jewish movement? Well, it's pretty much the five books of Moses. It's the Law and the Prophets. Uh, it's the 613 Commandments. It's God's instructions to mankind. That's, you know, the kind of the core of Judaism. So that kind of guides the Jewish movement, and it also guided the first century believers uh, as far as how to act and conduct themselves within the community and within their personal private lives, etc. But what goes further back than the Torah? What goes further back than the law of Moses? And it's that that I want to talk about. It's that that's kind of the key, the thing uh, um, that's missing in not necessarily the Protestant Christian movement, but the Messianic, Torah-obedient, Nazarene Jewish movement. So if we go further back than the Torah, we go further back than Moses, we come to Abraham. And Abraham was just this nobody that God chose and he became the founder and the father of our faith. And uh, what was Abraham's focus? Abraham's focus certainly was following God and his commandments and his instructions as was revealed to him and as he knew it. But basically God said, I want to bless you. I want to bless you in order that you may be a blessing. Because when I bless you, I'm going to bless the world through you. You're going, I'm going to bless your socks off and I'm going to bless you so that you can be blessed to be a blessing. So blessed to be a blessing, having God's favor, having God's hand on your life, um, being blessed by God in order that you may bless other people. So what was Moses or what was Abraham all about? Abraham was all about uh, spreading the truth about the one true God. See, up to this point, everybody was pantheistic. 
and they worshipped a pantheon of gods, a family of gods. And these gods were pretty much the same gods no matter what people that you talk about. It's just that they had different names among the different uh, people groups of the world at that time. But the pantheon was pretty much the same. They just went by different names. And so uh, there's, there's uh, much legend uh, in regards to Abraham being a missionary, being an evangelist. In other words, him um, uh, promoting this uh, monotheism, this, this one true God of Israel, this God that was above all other gods. And every chance and every opportunity he got, he would proclaim uh, the one true God. So Abraham was a missionary. Abraham was an evangelist. He was a missionary because he left his home country and he sojourned and traveled in a land that was foreign to him, that was not his own, but was promised to be his and to his descendants in, in the distant future. Uh, but he was a, a missionary. He was an evangelist. So this is the heart of the Bible. This is the heart of Scripture. This even comes before the Torah. The Torah, the law, God's instructions, just shows us how we can be missionaries and shows us how we can be evangelists, how we can um, uh, please God in our communal and private lives, which aids us and assists us in evangelism and missions. And modern-day Christianity has kind of gotten away from this. Yes, we send out missionaries, we, we uh, send money to missionaries and to evangelists and to ministries, but many times the local church uh, is just focused on teaching and serving themselves, not having an outward focus, not having a communal outreach focus, not having a missions focus. Sure, they give money, it's part of the budget, but do they actively reach out evangelistically to their community. Sadly, many churches do not. So we've lost that missions evangelism uh, focus that Abraham had and um, that, that the uh, first century believers, the first century church had. Now, a lot of people may argue that Judaism has never been uh, missions focused or evangelistic. And I beg to differ because Yeshua himself called out the hypocritical hypocritical Pharisees when it says, you will cross land and sea to make one proselyte. That's missions. That's evangelism. A proselyte is a Gentile that converts to Judaism. That's what a proselyte is. He said, you will go over land and sea. In other words, you will make great efforts and go great distances to convert someone to Judaism. And he says, then you'll make them twice a son of hell as you are. In other words, you make them a bigger hypocrite than you are yourself. And so uh, uh, Judaism was evangelistic and missionary focus. And where did they get that from? They got it from Abraham. It all goes back to Abraham. And again, the Torah, the God's laws, God's instructions assists us and aids us in that uh, evangelistic missions focus. Why this evangelism mission focus? Because the world, the fallen world, was deceived by uh, Satan and his fallen angels to worship false gods. All of the uh, worship and attention was taken away from the one true God and put on the fallen heavenly angelic beings who paraded themselves as gods, as the pantheon of Canaan, and stole the, the rightful worship uh, from the one true God. So God wanted to bring mankind back to him and redeem mankind, and he did this by starting with Abraham and by promoting monotheism, uh, the, the profession and teaching and doctrine of the one true God of Israel, the God who is above all other gods. So that's where the mission's focus began. And again, uh, the Torah aids, uh, the law aids the believer in carrying out this, this mission evangelism focus. So, uh, you know, fast forwarding through Abraham, through the children of Israel and Moses, uh, and and all the way to the book of Acts, to the first, what's called the first century church. Again, it was a Jewish movement. It was a Jewish sect. And um, evangelism and missions was the focus. Because what was, what was Yeshua's last words? What was Jesus' last words? It was the Great Commission. Go, therefore, into all the world and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I command you, and I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. 
So it was that great commission. It was that teaching and that profession of the one true God, of uh, his, his written and living word, and the redemption plan for mankind. That's what it's all about. It all comes together. So what I was missing in my Protestant Christian upbringing, in my Protestant Christian life, I was missing that which aided my evangelism. I'm, I was missing the Torah. I mean, I got some of the Torah because as a believer, as a, as a Christian, as a Protestant, we were already following the Ten Commandments and, and you know, a lot of the, the principles in the Word of God. But we were missing the mark because we were saying that the majority of God's laws has been done away with at the advent of Messiah. And Yeshua himself said in Matthew 5, don't think that I've come to do away with the Torah, that I've come to do away with the law. I did not come to do away with the law and the prophets. I came to, to uh, fulfill. And that, that Greek word, that Aramaic word, that Hebrew word fulfill means not to do it so you don't have to. It means to bring it into its full and complete meaning and understanding so that you may do it, that you may follow it, that you may be to go on and continue to fulfill it. So that's what I was missing. I was missing the fullness of God's law, the fullness of his commandments. I was missing the Torah. That's what I was missing. And when I learned this and, and grabbed hold of this, it totally changed and revolutionized my life forever. I become a more fulfilled and happy person, but at the same time, uh, you know, I, I started joining myself with other believers that had that same revelation, that was going through that same movement and getting back to the Torah, getting back to the laws of God. And now, being in this messianic, um, Nazarene Jewish Torah obedient movement, and being in it for twenty some years. I'm finding that there's something missing. I was missing something in Christianity, which was the Torah. Now I'm in the Torah and a believer in Messiah Yeshua, and yet now there's something missing. Because now it's the Messianic, Torah obedient, Nazarene Jewish believers that are that are just Torah, 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 Torah. And that's good. We need that because people need to come back to the instructions and the laws of God because that will enable us and help us and aid us in carrying out the Great Commission and being missions and evangelistically uh, focused, right? So, so what are we missing in the Torah obedient Messianic Nazarene Jewish movement? We're missing evangelism. We skipped Abraham and went straight to Moses, and we're just pounding away on Moses, harping away on Moses, law, 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 instructions, 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 Torah, 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 Torah. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. There's a time and a place for that, but not. Uh, when you sacrifice what the what the law was given for, the meaning and the purpose of the law, and that is to aid and help in the evangelistic focus that Abraham was given to proclaim the one true God of Israel and bring mankind back to the knowledge of the one true God of Israel and have how to have a personal relationship with that one true God. So Christianity uh, was more evangelistic and missions focused because. You know, they, they totally left out the Torah, but they focused on the Great Commission at the end of Matthew and focused on the book of Acts. And, you know, let's let's tell everybody about Jesus. Let's tell everybody about the Messiah without really telling what the Messiah taught. They were saying he was the redeemer of mankind. He's the savior of the world. Yes, good. That's all true. But what did he teach? He taught the Torah. He taught the, the, the law of Moses. He taught the instructions of God as revealed to Moses, which enabled and enabled his disciples to evangelize and to be missionaries. And so that's what we're missing in, in um, the Torah obedient messianic Nazarene Jewish movement. We're missing that evangelistic focus because we're so focused on Torah, on culture, on customs, on traditions, on the Hebraic way of life, on uh, zit, seat and tefillin, not saying that these things aren't important. They are. They're important. But we're focusing on, uh, on eating kosher and focusing all these things about the Torah without understanding why. It's not just so we could please God and obey God and keep his commandments. What's the purpose of keeping in, in the commandments? So that we'll be blessed. Deuteronomy uh, 27 and 28. When we keep the Torah, when we te keep God's instructions, we'll be blessed. So what's the purpose of being blessed? So we can feel good? 
Oh, thank you, God, I'm blessed. No. Why was Abraham blessed? He was blessed to be a blessing. We are blessed when we keep Torah, and we are blessed in keeping Torah for the purpose of being a blessing. How are we going to be a blessing to the world? We're going to be a blessing to the world by missions and evangelism, by telling everybody about the one true God, about God's instructions, about uh, God's Messiah, and how he can redeem us from our, our sin and redeem us from our lost state and bring us back into a right relationship with the one true God of Israel. Circumvent and bypass all these false gods because the God of Israel is the God above all gods. So in Christianity, I was missing the Torah. Now that I'm in Torah and now that I'm in a Torah obedient Messianic Nazarene Jewish movement and lifestyle, the light bulb's going off and I'm discovering that I'm missing missions. I'm missing evangelism because that's, that's one of the main reasons why the Torah, why God's instructions were given to be a vehicle so that we can rightly show the world how God wants us to live and what God expects of us and how we can have a right relationship with God, the one true God, because God's laws were different from the laws of the pantheon of Canaan. It was revolutionary. I mean, it gave women rights. It gave women respect. It, it showed that people weren't uh, weren't property and weren't you know just things to be exploited. God, the God of Israel, was not a God that could be manipulated like the gods of Canaan. Jump through these hoops, do this, sacrifice that, and you know you can bend the Canaanite God's will to your own. So it was to totally, totally something different and revolutionary. So as a Torah-obedient, Messianic, Nazarene Jewish believer in Messiah Yeshua, I'm, I'm realizing that through Torah, we need to get back to that evangelistic, missionary, outward focus in making disciples. Why do Protestant Christian churches die? Why do they close their doors? The, the number one reason is because that is because they come become inward focused instead of outward focused they focus on themselves and serving themselves and just doing church the way they've always done it going through the motions routines and rituals without reaching out to the community to their Jerusalem and they die as a result so the same thing is going to happen with this revival of Torah with Christians coming in droves to the understanding that God's laws are still applicable to the life of a believer in Messiah Yeshua today. It doesn't save us, but it just shows us what God's blueprints and rules are for life and his expectations for us, how he wants us to live. And again, why? So that we can live in an appropriate, proper way, so as to evangelistically and mission-wise reach out to the world and bring them to the one true God. So the just as Protestant Christian churches are dying and closing their doors because they are no longer uh, focused on the Great Commission, they're no longer missions-minded, evangelistically focused, as was our father Abraham who started it all, so too the Messianic, Torah-obedient, Nazarene Jewish movement will also die if we don't wake up to the fact of what Torah is really all about. And that's all we want to do is teach Torah because we were starved from it and kept from it for so many years in our Christian life. And we're so excited about it because it's, uh, it's God's laws and God's rules for living that brings us blessing. We've forgotten why it brings us blessing. It, we forgot the focus and the reason and the purpose that God's laws bring us blessing so that we can be a blessing to other people. And how are we to be a blessing to other people? by going and uh, by evangelizing, by being missionaries. So we as Torah obedient, Messianic Jewish believers, Nazarene Jewish believers and Messiah Yeshua need to get back to, to being missions focused, getting back to the teachings of our Rebbe and our Rabbi Messiah Yeshua and how he lived and walked out and, and taught us how to live the Torah. Because that's gonna be the blueprint of how we're going to evangelize and how we're gonna reach out. I mean, the Torah changes how we think, feel, act, and dress. It changes how we eat. It changes every aspect of our being. And therefore, we become a unique and peculiar people where somebody says, hey, that person's different. I wonder why. It gets them curious and inquires why we act a, a certain way, why we dress a certain way, why 
we eat a certain way. And it gets them curious to ask questions, and it opens the doors for evangelism to talk to them about the true God of Israel and the Messiah he sent. The written word of God and the living word of God, and how this Messiah can bring us back into a right and proper relationship with the one true God. I hope I, I, I hope I've made myself clear. We need to get back to missions focused, mission minded, evangelistically focused, evangelistically minded, outreach minded, serving other people. We're blessed. We're blessed beyond measure. Why are we blessed? We're blessed to be a blessing. Let's bless people with the knowledge of the one true God of Israel, his, his written word and his living word, which going through both will have a restored right relationship with the one true God. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. Shalom, Shavuot Tov. God bless. Abrahamsdescendants.com, getting back to the first century in a 21st century way. Thanks for watching. Stay connected by subscribing to our other social media accounts and visiting our website at abrahamsdescendants.com.